My name's Ryan Gorman, and I work with the Everyday Edison Selection Committee, and I'm also a project manager here. Um, what we're going to be talking about today is how that selection process works and from both our perspective and as well what you may want to do as an independent inventor to increase your chances on the product that you're working on. So you've got a great idea. Now you need to decide is it worth investing additional time, resources, and money into that idea no matter whether you're submitting it for the show or you know trying to license it on your own or take it through and, and bring it to the marketplace. There's some items that should be looked at before anything but your time is, is kind of spent on the product. Now I'm not a, not a patent attorney but we will be talking about kind of doing some initial intellectual property searches as well as looking at the general overall market and trying to determine if there's a space for your product. You kind of think of the market as um, a field where, where different products are competing for space and there's only so much space so what you offer needs to be um, useful to the consumer. If there's another way or a better way of, of achieving the same thing it may diminish the likelihood that your product has success in the marketplace. One of the first things we might look at is, is just doing a general internet search and trying to determine what other products are out there. And the benefit to this is it gives you kind of a background as to what the price point may be. If you're seeing that a lot of similar products come in at around $20 and, you, and your product's going to cost you $40 or $50 or $60, that may be an issue that you want to red flag and address later and look at maybe how you can reduce the cost. Another thing it's going to tell you is, is what other features all these products are offering. And maybe if your idea didn't initially include that, you can add that feature into your design and, and improve upon the idea that you already have. So it's beneficial both from a validation standpoint as well as helping you understand what features you need to include. At our disposal and at everyone's disposal with the internet is um, a plethora of information available at, on both the USPTO's uh, website for searching patents and patent applications as well as um, you know some of your favorite search engines uh, for going in and looking what, what intellectual property is out there. If you think your idea may be patentable um, you definitely want to contact an intellectual property attorney. However, there's some things you can do before to ensure that, that perhaps um, the space you're trying to enter isn't crowded or, or isn't, doesn't already, you know, your product doesn't already exist. The first thing, like I said, is maybe you want to do a general, general search on the inter internet. So um, I've got an idea for a way of of seeing if there's mail in my mailbox without having to walk out there. That's a pretty pretty common problem that people have. So the first thing I may do is go to my favorite search engine and, and type in a general description without using brand names or um, things that would refine the search too much right off the top. A general description of what my product does. So we want to do a mailbox indicator um, and see what comes up. Now it looks like a couple things popped up and you can kind of read through here and see the descriptions. Um, if your product has you know a lot of physical characteristics a lot of search engines also provide tools for where they've gone through and, and earmarked a lot of the images for you. So you can switch over there and see what what pops up and we're getting we're getting with the description I put we're getting a um, kind of a, a myriad of different feedbacks all the way from it looks like voicemail products to actual physical mailboxes so I may want to refine my search by adding uh, different criteria like um, like letters or um, something else. If, if you if your search criteria becomes too tight you may want to back off and 
replace a word. Uh, maybe at the time a patent was written or, or at the time the product came out, a uh, particular nomenclature wasn't around, you may want to use a different descriptor. Uh, now that we've kind of started looking at products, and you can look um, pretty much forever on the internet, but uh, if you don't see a lot of physical products out there, there's a lot of patents that that haven't made it to the marketplace or may never make it to the marketplace. So it's important to look for those too. Uh, a couple tools uh, to be aware of is, is of course, um, the mouth, uh, I guess, of all patents, uh, at least in the U.S., would be the USPTO.gov. You can go there and then there's going to be two databases and two different ways that you can really search. The first database, and obviously the largest database, is going to be the issued um, patents. That's probably a good place to start if you're going to try and use the USPTO uh, right off the bat. It's not necessarily the, our first choice. It's a little cumbersome if you're not aware of the nomenclature and the way to enter information, and it only searches back to about 1976 as far as word searches are concerned. The other important thing is once you've ruled out that database is to remember to go back and check the patent applications. So these are, are applications that have been sent into the USPTO. They've issued, but they haven't necessarily, uh, I mean, they they haven't issued, they've published, but these aren't full-fledged patents yet. They may they may turn into patents, but, but they haven't done it yet. Um, an easier place to start may be one of the patent search tools. I, I like to use Google Patents. It's, it's fairly user-friendly. And what you're going to want to do is go in and go ahead and start with, with a pretty general search. So I, I've typed in mailbox indicator, and I've gotten... Um, quite a few hits here, so I may want to refine this search um, to a mailbox indicator that has a light, because in my mind, mine has has a light. To kind of wrap things up, the, the important thing to do with any idea uh, before you invest too much, too much of your time or your resources in there is, I know it's hard, but take the time, see what else is out there, see what else you're competing with. If you um, are in a crowded marketplace, it may make it more difficult to be successful. Uh, so you want to look and see what other products are out there, what those, those products cost. Um, second thing is you want to make sure you're not infringing on anyone else's intellectual property. So do a patent search. Start by going on the internet or going to the library and doing the search yourself. If you don't find anything, or even if you do find something, print it out and then take it to a patent attorney and get their opinion on it. Um, and really, the last thing to try and evaluate is whether you think that this is, uh, that there's a better solution out there. If you feel that um, maybe there's other ways to do it, explore those ideas. Um, don't hone in and lock in on your first idea. It may be kind of the catalyst that that drives you into multiple other ideas that, that will be successful.